everyone. Welcome to the next lesson in the series on the ins and outs of the new Affinity app. Now that we've set up a new document, let's take a quick look at the layout of the user interface. I'll do deeper dives into each of the areas in the next video, but for now, let's look at how Affinity is laid out. The general layout of Affinity is similar to that of the three apps in version two, with some exceptions and some cosmetic changes. Let's start at the very top and work our way around. Starting with the top toolbar, the logo at the top left will open up the welcome screen. Now it doesn't close out the current document, so when I wanna go back to it, I can just click to close this. Next to that, you're going to find one of my favorite new features, the studios, which is sort of an amalgamation of version two's personas and studio link. The next video is dedicated to studios and customizing them, but let's take a quick look at what they are. If you're coming from version two, you're probably used to seeing the personas up here at the top. Personas were specific to the ones you had selected. There was no overlap of tools and customization was limited. Studios here in Affinity are dedicated spaces that house the tools and panels for specific tasks, but they're really to organize them. The biggest difference between personas and studios is that studios are customizable. You aren't locked into including particular tools. In other words, I could take a tool that would traditionally be used for desktop publishing in the layout studio, for example, the table tool, and I could add it here to the vector studio. By default, the main studios that you're going to see when you first open the app are vector, pixel, layout, and Canva AI. The first three are for all intents and purposes, designer, photo, and publisher. If you're familiar with Studio Link from previous versions, it's similar, but so much better. Where Studio Link meant that you had to jump back and forth between apps. This allows you to jump between all three and access every tool and panel without ever leaving the app. The even cooler part, you can now customize these default studios and create your own. Again, I'm going to show you all of that in the next video. You'll find additional studios here under the vertical ellipses at the right. You can toggle studios off and on as you need them. You can see there are several additional default studios, including Slice, which is what was previously known as the export persona in Designer and Photo. I've already published the next video going into the ins and outs of the studios and how to customize and create your own. And I'll link this at the end of this one as well as below. But for now, let's move on to the rest of the toolbar. The top toolbar is completely customizable. While there are some tools on there by default, you have the ability to customize it and add more and you can have different toolbars set up by studio. One default tool that I want to draw your attention to is new, and that's the last one here on the toolbar. This quick export button allows you to choose the type of export you want to perform. You can see three here, and then there's some additional ones under the plus sign. You can set the parameters of the export, and from there you can export as many times as you want with a click of this button. Now there is still a full export dialog under file in the top menu, as well as, of course, the Slice tools under the Slice Studio. But this quick button allows you to quickly export one-off selections or documents as needed. Right under the top toolbar is the contextual toolbar. Now, this is not customizable. However, it will change depending on the tool that you have selected here at the top. The one change that you can make to this is to dock it elsewhere on your workspace. To undock it from the top, just double-click anywhere on the toolbar. Now along the top and the bottom, you're going to find three drop zones. And if I hover over here, you can see I'm getting these green boxes in the middle and then the two sides at the top and the same thing on the bottom. Now mine are green because that's what my system is set up as. Yours may be different depending on how you have your machine set up. Now you don't have to dock them here. This is locking it in place, but you can technically move it anywhere on your canvas. Just keep in mind that some toolbars are going to be longer than others and can potentially get in the way of your workspace. You can also undock the toolbar and move it to another monitor if you're working with multiples. If I want to redock this, I'll just double click it, but it's always going to remember the last place it was at. So if I were to double click this now and then undock it, it's going to go right back to where it was. If I want it to be in a particular place at the top or the bottom, I'll just dock it first. So I'll move it to the middle here and then redock it to the top. One thing you're going to notice is that the contextual toolbar has been reworked a bit, so there's less icons taking up space. So for example, with the move tool here, these three used to be out on the toolbar and it's been moved under this cog shape just to save on space. On the left side, you'll find your tools, which again are going to change depending on the studio you have selected. Now this is a fully customizable toolbar, which can be set differently for each studio, including those that you create yourself. You can also include the same tool in multiple studios if you'd like. 
To customize, you can either click on these three dots or you can right click and choose customize tools and this option box is going to pop up. I'm going to walk through how to customize the toolbar in the next video. This toolbar can be undocked and moved around. So I can either double click it or I can right click it and choose to turn off dock tools. I can move this where I want. And if I want to redock it, I can either right click and turn this back on, or again, I can just double click it. There are additional options when I right click, including toggling on and off hide sub tools. This creates a secondary toolbar whenever you have tools that are grouped. So wherever you see these little carrots, this is handy when you're going to use several tools in rapid succession and don't want to have to keep going back to the toolbar and accessing the dropdown. For example, I can grab my rectangle tool here and I can go back in and grab the star and I can grab the segment tool here and I can just keep adding shapes and I don't have to keep going back to the toolbar to open that back up again. Now I can either leave this docked here or I can hover over on the right side and get the dock over here. You also have a drop zone at the top so you get more of a horizontal as well as at the bottom. If I want to change this back to vertical, I just need to bring it over here, but I can also undock this and just have it sitting right next to my canvas if that's more helpful. Panels are pretty much the same as they were in version two, but there are some new ones such as Data Merge and EPUB, but they all work the same as they did in the previous apps. These will also change depending on the studio that you have selected, but they're fully customizable in that you can dock them together however you'd like, or you can have them floating. You can also choose which side of the workspace that you want to have them on. So I just move this one over to the left side. You can find all of the panels up here under windows in the top toolbar, and you'll see them categorized here at the bottom. But you can also choose the drop down carrot here on an existing panel and choose the panels option. This is going to give you a search bar, or you can scroll down and find the panels that you want to turn on. In the next video about customizing studios, I'll show you how to set mine up and how I decide whether I want them permanently in my workspace or not. The pasteboard is your workspace behind your document. If you right click on it, you can change the pasteboard color. You can clip your objects to your canvas if you're not working with an artboard. And you can also turn design aids like guides, margins, and grids on and off. And finally, at the bottom here, you're going to find an info bar that's going to give you tool tips, as well as information about your canvas, including the name, current zoom level, and if you see an asterisk here at the right, it means you've made updates that you haven't yet saved. If you have any questions about what we covered in this video, let me know in the comments below. Coming up in the next video in the series, we're going to take a closer look at studios, how to customize them, and how to set up your own. You can find that video right here. Thanks for watching.